you guys can all click away the obnoxious message that pops up when Zoom tells you it's recording us now, and uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll get going. So welcome back to a slightly delayed new to life cycle insights. This is week three of a four, I'm gonna call it a four and a half week session that we do. Um, typically this session is done over four weeks. Uh, you know, the calendar likes to play with us because every now and again a month will have five weeks in it. We do have a fifth week of content and the 29th of this month, we will be doing a fifth week of content. So normally folks get, um, you know, just a, a, a much more, um, kind of basic event uh, version of this. But if you go down to the welcome section uh, or to the help section in Lifecycle Insights, and it'll help you if I share my screen. Look, I'm all discombobulated because we started late. Um, and Amy, I was wrong. This is asking folks, we do have to admit folks. So okay, I'm gonna make I, you I, the, they're not showing up for me. I'm gonna make you the admin so you can admit folks. Cool. Yeah, I was just going to say, one of my guys is that the host will let you in. That must be Travis. He's on his way. It is. All right. So <clears throat> with that, um, as you as you start, as you're getting started with Lifecycle Insights, if you're hopping in this in the middle, we're in week three right now. So um, if you go down here and just type in welcome in the search bo box under help, uh, you will find all of the new to Lifecycle Insights content recorded. Um, some of these are a little aged. We're working on updating them. So, you know, some of the UI might not be as crisp. There might be a couple of things that are, are, are a tad different, but they'll get you in the right direction. So if you missed week one or week two, you can go back and watch those. If you want to go take a look at um, week four or week five ahead of us, if you don't want to wait for us to get there, if you're in a rush and you've got things to do, um, we're happy to let you skip ahead and go follow those. So don't hesitate to go search welcome in the help section. And that'll take you to these same new to LCI uh, recordings of what we're doing today. Additionally, as you're working your, your way through your onboarding, you can come here and click contact us. Any kind of a help request, uh, technical support uh, feature request, if you find that something doesn't happen in the platform that you think it should, or you've got a great idea that you think we should implement, go ahead and include those here in a feature request. These go out to our support department. I will promise you, this is not insert big name vendor support here. Um, this is, uh, very personalized, very curated support from a bunch of uh, fanatical customer support folks. All of our support tickets get looked at uh, in minutes, not hours or days, and you get responses and resolutions quickly. So if that's not your experience, uh, you can reach out to me directly or you can reach out to any member of our team. Um, you'll actually get several of us um, if you email that address right there. You can also email non-technical questions to that, right? Hey, I'm sitting here putting together my first risk assessment, don't really know where I'm headed and I need some guidance. Um, tech support's not gonna be able to help you with that. Those are the smart guys that build things and, and build automations and do cool stuff. Um, they're not the guys to talk you through the logic behind closing a sale using risk, risk assessments. Um, that's something that you'll wanna get in touch with somebody uh, on my team for. So that'll be, that'll be a conversation with me or with Amy or with Marnie. So with that said, as, as we kind of hop into the platform and you're working your way through onboarding, one of the things that you'll notice is you have an onboarding checklist up here. If you have not completed that checklist, then you still have some work to do. Make sure that you get through this, this entire checklist as you're working through your onboarding. Once you're done with that checklist, then go down to integrations and make sure you've integrated with as many data sources as is physically possible. Uh, every data source adds an, a little extra layer of data, some extra data points, some things that allow us to give you a more complete picture of what your environment looks like. We've added Breach Secure Now as a brand new one. So if you haven't seen that one in there yet, um, you know we do have some additional data points coming in from there. Um, make sure that you've done all of your integrations. Once you've got all your integrations built, we've got all your data, everything's coming in nicely. That's when we can dive into things like assessments, which is what we're gonna talk about today. So assessments essentially is a collection of assessment items. Think of an item as, as a question or a policy or a procedure, something that we want our clients to be aligned with our best practices on. Uh, and then the, those items get compiled into templates which get presented to our customers when we run an assessment event. So an event might be a quarterly business review. An event might be a um, new prospect that we're out sales pitching to. Uh, but for any, for any number of reasons, we will run an assessment, which will import a template, which is a collection of assessment items. So those three things kind of tie together in that way. As we look at an individual assessment item, and I'm just going to steal remote access policy as an example. We're checking to see, does the customer have a remote access policy? 
in this particular case, we're using a very short assessment item and a longer, more detailed answer. So we can choose a red answer, a yellow answer, or a green answer. We Third graders know how to read a stoplight, so hopefully the C-level executives we present to will as well. I know it's questionable sometimes, but um, you know this is the thing that really helps us take complex information and distill it down to really simple, actionable, customer-facing information. So our red answer is our problem answer. This is really broken. It doesn't even come close to aligning with our best practices and something else needs to happen. The yellow answer, kind of in between, really, really broken and purring along like a kitten. It might be that we're, we used to be a sonic wall shop. Today, we're a SOFO shop and my customer still has a sonic wall deployed. I switched firewalls a year ago. I can't expect all my customers to go buy my new firewall religion of choice. So we're going to market yellow until such time as theirs goes end of life uh, or such time as their, uh, their licensing or warranty expires and then we'll switch them up, right? Or it may be that, uh, you know, in this particular case, we're looking at a policy or procedure. They have the policy, but we don't know when the last time they reviewed it was and they haven't shared it with IT. So if their user were to call in and say, hey, I need help getting remote access, we might go, yeah, no problem, even though their policy says a salesperson should never have it or, uh, you know, it should be protected with MFA and we don't know that we need to set up MFA with it or whatever. We can do a better job of, of, of meeting our customers' expectation if they share their policies with us. That's why at my MSP, all the policy documents lived in uh, IT glue and our customers used uh, my glue to be able to see what those policies were, update them with IT and share the latest version with us. Blue is typically your acceptable risk answer. I know it's not perfect. My customer's never going to spend the money. So he's going to sign a piece of paper that says, I'm a cheapskate. I'm not doing what Rick asked me to do. And for that reason, I'm not going to hold Rick liable when I get breached and it was my own damn fault. Okay. And then you're going to have the grays, which are the unknowns or the more information needed, not applicable type answers. And then of course you got green. Green is my happy place. Green is good. Moving on. We don't really need to talk about those in our business reviews. Uh, those are the things that we're doing right. And uh, you know, the customer has, has already adopted our best practice, our favorite solution. And then down below that, what you'll see is scoring instructions and explanation remediation. And I'll show you where those come into play in a minute. But I want to take a minute and talk through these because these are super, super important. Um, number one, they're blank on all of the templates you can import from us. Okay. And I just got done saying they're important and we didn't bother to fill them out. And I understand that's kind of uh, a mixed message, right? However, <clears throat> scoring instructions is designed to say that at Amy's MSP, you know, maybe they were a Meraki shop, right? They got all these Meraki firewalls out there. And one of their assessment questions is, is IPS IDS enabled on the firewall? Well, at Amy's Meraki shop, the instruction on how to, how to find the answer to score that is going to be way different than it was at Alex's Sophos MSP, right? So I can't write the, where do you go to find the document or the information for you guys in the document, but I can recommend that you come back and fill these in. And the power in these is not in that, now Amy's going to remember to go to where to look, where to look for the checkbox because Amy's the smart person who built all this, right? Amy knows where to go to look, but at some point, Amy's going to need to be cloned. She's going to need to be duplicated. She's going to, the company's going to get big enough that she needs to have uh, minions who can do the same job that she does, or that can help her do the more menial tasks like checking checkboxes. And if we want to be able to hand this off, we need to document, where do I go to find the answer? And then if it's not perfect, how do I remediate it? Right. So for, for an go, going back to my firewall example, I show you where to check the box. Uh, my explanation remediation might say for a fully managed customer, if this is turned off, create a ticket, notify the customer we're going to make some firewall changes and just go fix it. Right. It's included in their agreement. It's just aligning them with my best practice. I don't need to sell them a new firewall. They have the one I want them to have. It's just not configured. Right. Make a ticket, do the work, notify the customer, move it on. Right. Customer doesn't have the right firewall. That's a second scenario. And we might come in here and say, hey, we've got multiple scenarios. You know, um, here's, here's scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, right? So scenario two might be they're an all-you-can-eat customer, but they don't have my favorite firewall in place. What do I do? Well, now I create a project and I try and swap out the firewall. We go, the VCIO goes and makes a recommendation to the customer that we upgrade them to our favorite product. Um, is there something we can do for patchwork in the interim, like enable that feature or function on the current firewall until we can get them over into our favorite firewall? So those are all the things you want to spell out. You want your logic, your thought process to go into these so that as you teach the other people in your organization how to do this kind of work, you're all operating from the same playbook. This is the playbook that puts it all together. Any questions about that before we jump into 
uh, templates and how all this how all this works. Okay, so now I'm going to go from assessment items into assessment templates. You'll see in my demo environment, I have more templates than I possibly could have a use for. That's just what happens in demo environments, so excuse the mess. But if you look in your environment, you're going to see down below here a list of templates that you can import. You probably don't have anything or just one or two above this list. This is where you can come down and say, I want to start with some, uh, I want to hit the ground running. I want some base best practices, but I plan to add on to it and do some more work with it. Probably 70, 80, 85% of our customers start with this LCI default assessment. Um, our more mature customers will start with, and I just clicked the button I shouldn't have, our more mature customers will start with the maturity model risk assessment. And I want to explain the difference between these two. In the default assessment, you're going to see categories like hardware, business applications and software, security, right? This is where we spend a big chunk of our time. These, these are questions that you're going to need to answer every question in the assessment for every customer you have. There's not a very good use case for, I'm not going to answer some of these questions because this customer doesn't need business continuity, right? That's not a thing. Um, but what we might get to, if we have a, a customer who, when we, when we go run their first assessment, we're going to see, we marked 35 of 40 questions red. They look at it and go, well, this is an impossible task. I'm never going to get there. Please go away. I can't afford you because you're going to charge me a ton of money to fix this. This is where something like a maturity model assessment comes into play. And this is where maybe with a new prospect, we might go answer the first 22 items in the level one foundational. Do they have a password policy? Are their servers up to date? Are their workstations up to date? Or are they, have they moved every, all their storage to the cloud? You know, what exactly are they doing for directory services? Here's some really, really baseline best practices. I'm going to ask all of these of all of my customers, no matter what their technology level. Maybe after onboarding, I go back and ask 23 more questions and go, now that they're actually my customer and we're doing some management of them, are we doing a few extra things? Do we have a few extra policies deployed? Do they have cyber liability insurance? Do we have MFA deployed across the environment? Do we have some spare devices or do they have print management in place, right? Now we have uh, something I can do with my customers at 90 days or 180 days. At a year, I might go back and do the intermediate items and I might add some more questions. And the reason this is built this way is that that customer who I'm only 90 days in with, I'm only gonna show up to level two. We're not gonna print anything to or beyond. Right? So we're not going to end up printing all this other stuff. We're not going to overload them with, here's a billion reds you can't address. They're in the funnel. They're doing the work. They're going to improve over time. And that's how this is built. So each methodology is a little different. Your MSP needs to decide what your methodology is. At my MSP, I had a pre-sales risk assessment, which is in here exactly the way I used to use it. Okay, 30 questions. Rapid fire tool scan. Go talk to some humans um, You know, in, out, done. Uh, you, you, very, very simple, very easy. I used a combination of this LCI default and this pre-sales assessment at my MSP um, and, and, and had significant amounts of success. This is a more modern thing. It kind of takes after the CMMC maturity model type concept. Um, your MSP needs to decide, are your customers mature? Are your customers already working down this path? Or do you need to start simple? If you need to start simple, it may be that you just take that default assessment. Alex. Yes. So can you go back into those? Yeah. Um, you said when you were talking about going through the LCI default assessment, you said that that one might be overwhelming to some like newer customers or something because there's too no, much. No, I think to... I think the C the uh, maturity model one is overwhelming because it's eighty. Okay, questions. all right. This I one's about forty five, I think. This one's forty five right. or fifty questions. It's much easier to get through. Um, okay. And I, but everyone has the scenario where you've got that, that brand new customer who has nothing right, right? Right. We have to just be aware that if we present them a risk assessment with everything marked red, uh, it's going to be a tough conversation. Right. Um, I, I prefer the conversation of we didn't get there overnight. We're not going to fix it overnight. So don't freak out. I'll help you prioritize and we'll get through this. Um, but a lot of MSPs have said, I'd rather present fewer items with, and, and just approach this in bite-sized pieces. Got it. Thank you. So once we've picked our assessment, we know what work we're going to do. And for the record, any of those assessments, you can add your own questions to, you can delete our questions, you can rewrite our questions, you can change them. Uh, I recommend that you add a significant chunk of your own stuff to it. Every product, um, every policy, procedure, best practice, software solution, anything you have in your, in your best practices, in your stack, should be represented as a question on your, on your assessment template. So when you say, does the customer have Duo, right? That's, hey, is MFA enabled? Um, have we done zero trust? Have we set up zero trust on the endpoints? Well, do we have threat locker deployed, right? If I sell threat locker, I want a zero trust question on there. If I don't have a, a solution for zero trust, 
might not be a question I'm ready to ask my customers yet. So go through it, customize it, make sure that you're ready and, co and comfortable with the content and that the content is all inclusive of your stack. You'll, excuse me, you'll add questions when you feel like the content is, is missing something that's included in your stack or your best practices. So as we go through and score these, um, I can see somebody's created a new one and not answered any questions. So I'm going to delete that and we're going to start it over. So when we go through and score these, we're going to do, do a new risk assessment. We'll pick which assessment we want to do for a customer. What the heck, we'll do a pre-sales one. Um, this is a pre-sales assessment. These are simply tags that let you see out here, where was my frame of thought when I was doing this assessment? Was I doing a comparison to a baseline we had done when they first onboarded? Uh, is this pre-sales before they're even really a customer? Or is this comparing to what happened in a, at another point? Here's the date when I did the assessment, life is good, moving on. So when we get into scoring an assessment, it's literally red, yellow, green. How does my customer stack up, right? Their servers, this customer, they're satisfactory on servers, but maybe they've got some workstations that are older than dirt and shouldn't be around anymore. And some of them probably have some Windows 7 installed, right? So as I get through looking at uh, the items and I start to mark some of them red, I'm going to want to come in here and say, let's add a public comment and let's explain what better looks like. Yeah, I mean, you can you can put as much business case here as you want. Um, and then down here under operating systems, we're going to add another public comment and we're going to say recommendation. Okay, so I filled in a couple of answers here. You'll see here, back to what I was talking about earlier, I don't have the option on this particular question to show explanation, remediation, uh, or scoring instructions. That's because it's not filled in. And this is what I wanted to point out to you guys when we first started this. So if I say show scoring instructions up here on workstations, now I can see there's a link back to IT Glue that walks me through and shows me exactly what I'm supposed to do to answer this question. Um, the other potential is that uh, you know, we actually spell it out here. If you saw on the other page, this is actually a full WYSIWYG editor. Anything you could put into this box, I can put in this box. So I could spell it out. I could add screenshots. I can include anything that I want to, uh, um, to, to those details. But these are the two details that if they're filled in on that assessment item, they'll allow you the opportunity to go back and, uh, and give some more detail to somebody who might be answering this. Notice we also have the opportunity for private comments. If you have an engineer out doing the work, they add a private comment in here that says, hey, you know what? Um, hey, Tyler, when you're doing this risk assessment uh, or when you're presenting this to the customer, know that this particular problem has created a bunch of tickets in the last six months or, you know, there's th th there's a pesky end user on this device that we're going to struggle with the replacement of it or whatever. You can say things there that won't be presentable to your customer. I'm just going to run down and answer a bunch more questions here real fast. So pay no attention to, to the bouncing ball here as I, as I go get a couple of these answered so that we have something to talk about. Now, now that I have them all answered, I want to go ahead and show you guys what the, uh, what the output of this could look like. So I'm going to go ahead and download the, uh, the template here. Um, I'm going to stick my logo on it. If you don't have a logo in the system yet, you can literally drag and drop it here. Your logo should be in some form of one pixel high, two pixels wide. So 50 by 100, 100 by 200, something like that. That's going to play the nicest in the system. So when I click download, Edge goes and hides my report behind something that I have no idea where to find it. And we get some output that looks a lot like this. I'm sorry, did you just say something about Edge not doing something right? Yeah, yeah. Edge, Edge goes and hides my report. You keep your Chrome over there on your dirty computer. <laughs> We, we may have an internal discussion about uh, about operating system preference or about uh, about browser preference. But um, so here here what we see if I had filled out five categories, you would see all five categories at the top here. This is an example of that. The reporting engine only shows you the the output that that you've set up for. So if I was doing a maturity model risk assessment where the next five categories were ones that the customer is not mature enough to deal with, leaving them blank just makes them disappear off the output. 
as I scroll off the first page, I can see which categories I did best on and which ones I which ones I need improvement on. As I go down, now this is category one hardware. I can see all the questions I answered and how I scored overall. This is simply a percentage. Okay, one point for red, two points for yellow, uh, uh, three points for green. Second category, I only filled out half of it, but I've scored 90 on that category. We're doing good. After I get through all my individual questions, we're going to lump all the reds together and then all the yellows together. These last couple pages, once you've worked with a customer more than once or twice, become where you skip to, right? You pull this report out, you lay it in front of the customer and you go, let's cover the first page where we talk about how we did overall, right? Here's how we did overall, Mr. Customer. Probably don't need to go into everything you were doing right. Let's just go talk about the things that create the most risk in, in the interest of time. Here's those answers. Here's what, what, what we selected with the radio buttons. And then here's those recommendations I typed into public comments. Anything that I don't put, put a comment next to looks kind of empty. So if you're filling something out, marking it yellow or red, let's give the customer the idea of what it looks like to fix it. These last couple of pages become your work, work plan for your customer. This is your remediation plan of how we move from where we're at today to where we want to be in six months or 12 months or whatever. These are the things that I'm going to go talk to my customer and say, these are the things I need you to help me address in the next couple of months to make sure that we move you into a better place. And I did flag something acceptable risk. I didn't include acceptable risk on the outcome, but you could very easily, um, if I go back here, you could very easily include that on the output simply by saying, hey, show me the acceptable risk items as well. So questions about filling in the assessment, about the basic details of, of that. Okay. You said that if you didn't answer a question, it was left, it was left off of the it assessment. Left off the assessment. Okay. And that goes for a question. And if there are no questions answered in a category, the entire category will be left off. Okay. Okay. So now I've run this pre-sales assessment for this customer. Um, this is their status quo. This is where the customer is without me but I wanna go show them what it's gonna be like to work with me. Life is gonna be better when I bring all of my tools to bear, right? So I can copy this assessment event, okay? It's gonna be a comparison by default. Maybe I didn't do this one until the day after. So this one is, is gonna to happen tomorrow. I'm gonna to copy over my public comments and my private comments just so we can see all of that. And I'm gonna click add. There's a lot of scenarios where someone will go into an environment and say, I ran an assessment. Now I want to show my customer if they do what I told them to do, how does that move the needle? Okay. And one of the things that we can do is go in here and say, oh, we marked this red. But when I come in, I'm going to give the customer a hardware as a service option. I'm going to replace all their PCs that are end of life. And I'm just going to get them taken care of. So my recommendation doesn't, my comment doesn't need to carry over. It kind of goes away because that's solved for. Um, when I do hardware as a service, I'm also going to replace all the operating systems that are out of date. So that problem will be solved for, right? It's just taken care of when they onboard with me. Um, VLANs and switches. Well, I'm going to hardware as a service, their entire network infrastructure, or maybe I can just reprogram what they have, but I'm going to add enough VLANs that we can, uh, that, that we can address it. Um, I guess this is just on switching in general. So I'm going to bring them my cloud managed switches, whatever. Um, and then backup of cloud services, we bring that by default with our solution. So it's no longer a risk the customer is willing to accept. It's just fixed. Endpoint security software, I'll bring them antivirus, et cetera. And now we can see we've answered the same number of questions. I'm going to go compare the, compare the original answer to the new one. So when my customer started with me, they were at an 82. Now they're at 100. 100 is not realistic in the sake of a demo environment. It happens, but um, it probably will never happen in real life because somebody will always have a couple of PCs that are aging out or, you know, some, something that you're, that you don't think is perfect, that you're still working to improve. But for the sake of just looking at this report, what you can see is we show you now by category in the hardware category, Mr. Customer, once you start doing business with me, um, I'll, I'll decrease your risk by about 24%. We'll improve your standing by 24%. And you see, we do that by solving for these workstations, these operating systems, and these switches that are all problematic for you, right? Here's all the things that we're going to make better by you coming to work with me. My favorite conversation around this is Mr. Prospect. You know, I know you told me your existing provider is spending, charging you 1500 bucks a month. And I have good news and bad news. Good news is you're getting exactly what you're paying for. The bad news is you're getting exactly what you're paying for. So what I wanna know is why you didn't take your other guy's advice when he adv advised you to solve for some of these problems. And they're gonna go, well, he didn't tell me to solve for this. He didn't even tell me those existed. He's never done anything like this for me. What the hell's going on? And you're gonna go, well, now I understand the problem. And unfortunately, Mr. Customer, this is time consuming work. It's gonna take a bit for me to do this for you every quarter, but I think this is the kind of thing you deserve to see every quarter. So 
in the interest of doing business with me, we would schedule a quarterly discussion around security and risk and all these things to make sure you don't backslide on the things that we fix and to make sure that you continue to fix new problems as they, as they turn up. So what it would look like if you work with me, I'll, fill, I'll fix this gap. Unfortunately, the bad news is I can't do that for the $1,500 a month he, you're spending with him to deploy all these new products and services and solve for the problems that we're fixing for here to provide you with hardware as a service on workstations and switches and these kind of things. There's some cost, Mr. Customer. So instead of fifteen hundred a month, I'm going to be at twenty three hundred a month. Um, you know, can we do business in that price range if it really does solve for the pains and the problems that you have in your current environment? This is a great conversation starter. Even better when the customer says, "You know, it doesn't sound too bad, but I think I need to get a second opinion." Um, you know, can you leave this this behind and let me go get a second opinion? Sure thing, Mr. Customer. What I'm going to leave you is the uh, is the summary detail because uh, you know, I've put a lot of work and energy into this and unless you purchase this risk assessment, I'll leave you the summary, but uh, you know, some of this is our secret sauce and we'll, we'll be keeping that. Now they can't take exactly what you showed them down to the guy across the street and go, hey, will you do this for 25 bucks cheaper than the last guy quoted me? Uh, Cause I'd like to hire somebody who's cheaper than him, right? They can't take it right back to their last guy and go, why weren't you solving for all these problems? Fix that and I'll keep you, right? Um, so this gives you the ability to leave something behind that's still punchy, still makes a point. You can print this to a Word document, or I'll show you other ways you can present it in a few minutes. Any questions about uh, about the copied assessment? You can see where the old questions are, the new questions, uh, how I got there, and how I did the assessment comparison that lets you see um, you know how things how things compare over time. So with that, um, I, I want to touch on just a couple of more things here. Um, we're going to take a step back here and look at the, the at this tab here, which is, is assessment analytics by customer. So when I've done a bunch of assessments for a customer, I'm going to start to develop some trends and want to be able to look at those, right? So over time, I've run the same default assessment for this customer four times. Okay, This lets me see that the first time I ran it, this prospect was a 48. He signed up to do business with me and I brought to bear all the solutions that moved him to a 73. Then we had some quarterly business reviews. He bought a little project then he bought a bigger project and we've improved him to an 80 at this, at this current state. So this just shows growth over time. This helps you answer the question, hey, Rick, um, you know, I know you told me it'd be 2,300 bucks and that sounded like a good deal at the time because everything was broke and I called you all the time when we first started doing business together. But now, and I love you, you guys are awesome. You fixed everything. I never call you. What the hell do I even pay you for? Right? Why am I spending 2300 bucks a month with you? Well, Mr. Customer, it's for me to manage the risk that exists between 80 and 100. It's for me to help you make sure you don't backslide back here to a 70 or a 48. And it's to help you manage some of these things. And we can see, Mr. Customer, where you, you didn't buy the last project, uh, the last hardware project I recommended for you. And now your hardware has started to degrade and decay and it's falling backwards. So what you pay me is to, to do is sit here at this table and have tough strategic conversations with you and hold you accountable to making sure you don't fall into the same pitfalls that are the reason you called me in the first place. Right. And we can have that conversation showing the results over time of, hey, look, you did what I told you to do right here and we improve things significantly. Right. You bought some hardware. We improved things significantly. You bought some. We, we got you off of on-prem office and on-prem exchange into Microsoft 365. We improved your reliability and your uptime. Um, well, I don't know about significantly because they seem to go down every 15 minutes nowadays. But life is better than it used to be. Right. You have you have more security and, and cooler, better things. Right. And we can have that conversation uh, around this report. So it's a pretty powerful report when we uh, when we look at it from that perspective. The other thing I'm going to show off here, and we'll get into way more detail on this next week when we have the conversation about recommendations, but when we find things wrong, we like to fix them. That's why we're in IT, right? So the latest version of this that I ran for this customer, or maybe one version of this assessment, I'll grab just one version of it. Now you can see I'm just looking at one event, has some problems, and none of these problems have been fixed yet. So I can come in here and swatch away the colors I don't want to see. You'll find swatching a lot of places in our system. Swatching is click on the colors you want to wipe away and we'll hide them, right? <clears throat> now I can just see the yellows and reds that this customer has in their environment. And I know I can fix a bad internet security appliance by selling them a new one. Well, when I sell them a new internet security appliance, it probably solves for intrusion detection and prevention as long as I can figure it correctly. So those things are related. Um, it's probably going to let me add multi-factor authentication to their VPN because now I got a new firewall that supports that. Um, let's see if it's going to do anything else. Um, it'll solve for, for not enough VLANs on the network too, because now we can, as we replace network equipment, we can build more VLANs. So from here, I can literally click create recommendation from selected items, 
I'm going to create a recommendation for the customer. I'm going to go out here and put in that I'm going to charge them $1,500 labor to install, to, to install and configure all of this to do this work. I'm showing them the things that I'm going to turn from red and yellow to green. So as one of our MSP partners early on said, I'm going to go play, get the red out with my customer, right? I'm going to go engage their competitive nature and get them to fix things. But I'm also going to link some assets that we're going to, that we're going to replace in the process. And I know today we haven't talked a lot about assets. That's actually uh, something we kind of talk about in weeks one and two. But, um, but when I go to link assets, I can now see all the assets that this customer has in their environment. And I can pick some that I want to resolve as part of this, as part of this project. Well, I know I'm only replacing network gear. Um, so I'm going to look at network equipment. I'm certainly doing sonic wall firewalls because we're, we're, that was what started all of this was a conversation around um, internet security appliances that didn't do their job. But I've got to do VLANs too, so I'll go ahead and replace the switches and maybe the wireless access points. And eh, what the heck, I'm going to replace all this network equipment that is at or near end of life. So all the old stuff, right? I'm just going to go grab it all. Now what you'll notice is there is a cost here in replacement and my tool has just said, hey, there's 12 items you're gonna replace. I'm smart, I'll do the math for you. So it's added up all the hardware costs. I added a labor cost. Maybe I gotta stick an extra wireless access point out in the corner of the warehouse because the customer doesn't have good coverage. So I'll go ahead and add some additional materials that are above and beyond the replacement materials that have their own costs already associated with them. And now I'm gonna save this recommendation. Why are both okay. of those TZ300s at a different cost? What's that? You had two TZ300 firewalls, but their cost was different. Oh, well, that's, uh, that, that's interesting. <laughs> that is the quality of demo data. <laughs> they should not be. I, we wind up with issues like that in the demo environment all the time because we somebody went in and said, hey, let me show you how to change the price of a firewall. Yep. Um, yep. But I would hope they're the same unless they have significantly different licensing packages. Um, now what you'll see, though, on the recommendation side, this is the piece you want to talk about today or on the, on the assessment side, is that these uh, assessment items are now solved for. So you'll see I've, link, I've shown the recommendation that I've linked them to. I know I don't have to worry about them anymore. These are in the side of the, of the product now that I'm going to use to go make proposals and have conversations with my customer. My customer will be able to see how we get from red to green. And that's that. I, I may have blinked, but <laughs> in the recommendations column where they all say new recommendation, is that based on the name you gave it? Yeah, or the name I didn't give it, I guess. Perfect, perfect. Okay, that's great. Right. When I give it a more creative name, um, you'll see they all come back here and uh, pick up a better. OK, so and, and you you can fill in descriptions and all that kind of stuff. I didn't want to get into that too, too terribly much today. <clears throat> um, so that's the big, uh, really important thing with uh, with recommendations and how you can compare them over time, how you can actually um, you know, create recommendations from here. One other thing I want to talk about is analytics across all of your customers. Um, we're working on some better ways to do this, but, um, you know, we do have here the ability to take an assessment that I've run against all of my customers and actually do some analysis and say, okay, this customer, this is how they scored this customer. This is how they scored on each assessment item. I like to look at it the other way. So I'm going to flip it. And now my customers are down this side. My products are across here. As I go across, what I'm looking for is patterns, right? My pattern says, every, I'm really good at getting people to use Microsoft Exchange or Office 365. Great. I'm very good at getting everybody on my BDR. Great. Um, I'm not so good at getting everybody to adopt a mobile device policy. Um, there's... I, I can't sell anybody redundant inter internet access except for one customer. Everybody else marks the acceptable risk. But this is an opportunity for you to look at and point out things that maybe as an organization like data encryption isn't top of mind for me. I'm not doing the best job of it. So is there an opportunity now for me to come up with a better product, come up with a better sales pitch, or just go engage my customers and say, hey, you know what? In Q1, Q1 is going to be encrypt everywhere conversation. Like that's the conversation. We're going to have the encrypt like everybody's watching conversation. And that's going to be a talking point to me, to every one of my customers. We're going to get really good at it. And we're going to get this deployed across all of my clients, right? So this gives you the ability to see where you might not be doing as good a job at selling a product or a service. Additionally, it lets me see which customer follows my recommendations versus the ones that don't. Okay. And this is just in relation to the last time I ran this particular assessment against this customer, right? So I can see that Hogwarts School of Wizardry does just about everything I ask them to do. People are us, not quite. Um, you know, they're kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, I can actually now see per category. So in business application software, everybody buys my business apps, we're good. In business continuity, well, 
home inspection services doesn't have the, the business continuity score that I want them to have at some place I need to work. Uh, but hardware, man, I kind of suck at selling hardware. Um, you know, I've got some scores here that just aren't what they ought to be. We need to get better at having the lifecycle management conversation. And I actually have two customers here that I would be concerned with are going to have machines that break down and they're going to be mad at me for it. In my mind, these are risk. These are customers who don't see eye to eye with me on lifecycle replacement planning. And I'm not here. I'm not a fire the customer guy, but I look at these as customers who might leave if I don't get them on the same page as me, if we don't find a way to, to have a, a more cohesive relationship. These are relationship problems. These are wedges that are going to cause problems. Regulatory compliance, I just kind of suck at it. Like I've got way too many customers here at 67%. That's a sign of something I need to do better. But this gives me some visibility and ability to pick things apart across customers and learn about who I am as a company and what I can do better or different. And I'm a huge iteration guy. Like in your first version of all of this is not going to be perfect. So you're going to want to examine the process. You're going to want to examine what you've built and see how you can do something better or different to improve your client's experience. And some of that is by going back and looking at your assessments and figuring out how you can do that. Questions about analytics across all your customers. Then out of sheer obligation, because I clicked on every other button on this tab, we're going to step into configuration options. I will tell you, this is advanced stuff. 95% of MSPs don't need to touch this tab ever, okay? Don't feel obligated to do this unless you, you look at something in here and go, oh my God, that would drive me crazy, I gotta do it. Um, this is where you can add assessment types, right? You see process checklist, we added a process checklist here. You could add one of these, you can rename one of these, whatever. You can only delete the ones that you added, um, but you can, you can add different assessment types. Not a big deal, not, not very exciting. Event cut scores. This is how we decide based on a category or an assessment score overall, how we're going to score that event, red, yellow, or green. So when I just showed you those categories and said, oh, hardware is red for this customer or yellow for this customer, it's because the total scoring in that category was greater than 80 or less than 50, right? And that impacts that color. So if you're, one, if you're old school, if you're old like me and you go, wait, an 80 is not, uh, you know, we had to get an 80 to get, to get a, a B. Um, you know, if you're like, hey, man, 75 is good enough, like, okay, you can go change that score. You can go make that change. And I can literally come in here and say, nope, 75% actually gets me, gets me there. We'll make the additional edits and, and move that around for you. Again, I don't think you need to get too deep in the weeds here. Red, yellow, and green matter way more than the, than the points and the, um, and the scoring and how you can skew sections and categories. Um, make the things red you want your customer to address. Make the things yellow you want them to think about. Make the things green that you are happy with and don't get too hung up on scoring. And then uh, the actual item scoring, this is the only thing that I think some people might wanna change. And the reason I say that is because everywhere else in the platform, unknown is blue. This is the only place where unknown is gray. At my MSP, I made acceptable risk yellow because it still represents a risk and I'm a jerk and I wanna point that out to you every time I talk to you, okay? Whether you accept the risk or I accept the risk, we're still gonna have a tough conversation when that risk puts you at you know, gets you breached or, or creates an event in your organization, I'm going to come back and say, I told you so. So I want to have remembered to talk about it all the time. So I made this change right here at my MSP. So if you want to capture this, uh, this image, um, you can, you can change acceptable risk and say, Hey, it's actually really only two points, whatever. We give it a half a point better than, than it needs attention by default. But this is the color scheme that I like. Um, again, don't get too hung up on it. Um, you know, a lot of MSPs make a lot of money with this platform with the out of the box settings around all of that. So with that, that really sums up kind of how we do assessments in here, what we do with them. Um, you know, I, I want to point out that there are different types of assessment uh, templates and you might use them for different things. So you might have a quarterly business review template that you use with your customer every quarter. You might also have an internal engineering template that your customer never sees that's way more detailed. You know, Office 365, red or green, right? Red, yellow, green. If they're in 365, they're, they're green. Anything else is yellow or red. You know, Google might be yellow and, and GoDaddy email or whatever is, is red. Um, but from an engineering perspective, as you're having your team go look at their Office 365, is just being in 365 enough? Or do we need DMARC and DKIM? Do we need mail flow rules? Do we need to block zip attachments? Do we need MFA deployed everywhere, right? So you might have this way more complicated assessment that you're doing internally under the hood that your, your smart guys are doing that you never have to talk to a C-level executive about where you go answer 10 questions around Microsoft 365 and use the summary of those to say, 
hey, Mr. Customer, you're in 365, but I want to do some additional security. Um, I marked your 365 yellow because at this point in your development, at this point in your maturity, I think you need to do more there. Um, so you can have different assessment types. You know, I, we have an MSP that has a specific assessment to firewall configuration. And once a year, they run every firewall through a firewall assessment, and they make sure that all the boxes are checked, that everything's configured the way they want it to be, and that they're doing the right things right every time, and nobody's changed it. Now, in my mind, that's using lifecycle insights to solve for the fact that you don't have a good change control policy, but change control tools for MSPs suck. That's a reality, and somehow we have to address it, either by LangGuard to get them to monitor it, or you go back through and check your firewalls on a regular basis. One way or another, you got to deal with it. So that's just a little tidbit on assessment events and how they work and what 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 you can the different types of templates you can create. Um, with that, I apologize. We started really late today. I appreciate everybody bearing with us through technical difficulties. Um, and I guess I talked too much. We're down to like two minutes left. I'm happy to take questions if you have them related to this content or unrelated to this content. Um, but let me know, you know, what are, what or how we can we can answer some questions to help you guys out. While you're coming up with questions, I'm going to put a link in the chat to my direct Calendly. If you have something that's longer than a two-minute question, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, connect offline and have a conversation. You guys are a quiet group today. Yeah. Usually, I get done with this and get to say, "Hey, you can have 20 minutes back in your day." Unfortunately, today you're going to get uh, one minute back in your day. So, if you guys don't have questions, you're welcome to to take a minute back. In